What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj NBA. And remember a few weeks ago, we talked about Eric Bledsoe. I did, um, but it was a big topic because of, you know, some stuff he tweeted and then him just not playing in games since then. Clearly wanted to be out of Phoenix and the Suns general management was like, okay, um, we're done with you. We're going to get you out of here. But until then, no more games. You're not really a member of this team anymore. So basically, Eric Bledsoe has just been chilling, waiting for today when he would finally be, you know, allowed to play in the NBA again, really. But of course, traded to the Milwaukee Bucks in exchange for a 2018 first round pick, second round pick, and center Greg Monroe to the Phoenix Suns. Bledsoe is going to be joining Giannis and company in Milwaukee to help build a uh, potential championship threat there. That's, that's of course, the objective. Um, but it's interesting because I did talk about this a few weeks ago. I talked about destinations. The Bucks were one of the top destinations that I talked about. Um, and, you know, it kind of just went away for a while. I mean, there were a few mentions here and there of Eric Bledsoe, but no one was really talking about Eric Bledsoe for the past week or so, maybe two weeks, um, waiting for this day. And that's what it's usually like, you know, as soon as someone, as soon as we know someone's going to get traded like Kyrie, you know, it takes a little while and we don't know exactly how long it's going to take. Um, but it happened pretty quickly, I would say, for a trade um, after a trade request. Um, and first of all, I just got to talk about the return package because this has been irking me all day looking at this. And like, I'm glad that, that Eric Bledsoe's in Milwaukee for both parties. I feel like he can help their team win. And also Milwaukee can improve their team. This is an exciting team that I want to see do well in the NBA. Um, but the Phoenix Suns are getting screwed with this trade big time. Um, and it, again, is a product of players announcing this shit, making themselves a low-value um, commodity by doing this shit. And it's interesting to me because with the Kyrie Irving trade that was kind of like this, you know, even though I guess his distaste for the Cavaliers was expressed in a slightly different manner. Um, it was basically the same type of thing. You know, Kyrie Irving, star point guard, wants out of Cleveland. Eric Bledsoe, probably the best player on the team, doesn't fit in Phoenix. He wants out. Big time player for the team, wants out. And in this case, it's usually up to that team, the Suns in this case, to make a trade and they're pressured to do it which means teams will throw low ball offers at them because they know that the Suns have to get rid of Eric Bledsoe at some point and the Suns at, at a certain time they're just gonna have to look at all the offers they've got and say look we gotta pick one and they're gonna pick the best um of the bad situation they have which is why bringing it back to Cleveland trade with Kyrie Irving I was very surprised that Cleveland was able to land not only Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder but also that 2018 first round Nets pick uh, which I thought was a phenomenal pull for the Cleveland Cavaliers although right now it doesn't look like they really won that trade however I think that in the end they will get their share and it will even out or they will benefit more either way let's get back to this Greg Monroe is a decent, you know, no, no, he's a good bench player in the league. He's a guy that can provide instant offense as a center. He can post up just about anybody. Um, and he's a valuable bench player for a good team, I would say. If you're a team that you need some bench points, you're a good team, you just need that, that spark off the bench, like this is a guy that can help your team. However, the Phoenix Suns should have negative interest in a guy like Greg Monroe. I really don't understand, and I say this with a lot of bad trades, but this one especially, I don't get how the Phoenix Suns are looking at all the offers that they have, and they're looking at this one and saying, uh, you know what, this is the best one. Because clearly, Greg Monroe was just like, oh, you're not getting enough, let's just throw in a player. And the Suns were like, okay, well, a player that... That, that's better than no players, right? I don't know if that's true. People are going to say, look, Phoenix, they needed a center. But Greg Monroe, 
he's not that type of player. I don't think he's going to help this team, this young athletic team, get up and down. He's going to bog their offense down and be a guy they throw the ball into in the post. He's not going to jump start fast breaks. He's not going to defend at the rim. He's not going to grab 15 rebounds a game. For me, it's weird. I just feel like that he doesn't fit in Phoenix one bit. It doesn't really make any sense for him to be there. Um, So we'll see how it works out. But Phoenix, they're not shooting for the playoffs. They're going to be in the lottery again. Why do they want Greg Monroe? Really, they should draft a center or something. (laughs) Honestly, I I, I don't know. I, I just... This just this seems weird to me that they would fall for Greg Monroe over whoever else they they were offered. Then you got the picks, the 2017, excuse me, 2018 first round and second round picks, protected picks, but from Milwaukee. And honestly, yeah, Milwaukee, I think they're like four and five right now, not doing so good. But I, I'm pretty sure we all agree that this is going to be a playoff team. We would be very surprised if the Milwaukee Bucks end up not being a playoff team. And if they don't, It's not like they're going to be the 13th or 14th best team in the East. They're probably going to be like the 9th or 10th if they don't make it. But most likely, they'll make it and they'll be around a 6th seed or higher. That's just probably what's going to happen. So, a first round pick from Milwaukee, I mean, it's okay, but it's not a game changer. It's not really a big deal. It might be like, like an 18th or 19th or 20th pick or something like that nothing really to get worked up over it could be decent but it's probably not going to be that much then you have the second round pick which is just you know no one really cares that's just another add-in like you're not getting enough let's just throw in something um and look i get it bledsoe's disgruntled he's a guy that they're looking to get out out of there fast he's a guy that you know they're receiving low ball offers for but nothing here really is helping your team and and what i see a lot of people mentioning is that there were talks discussions um about brogdon and thon maker those are two young guys that have at least brogdon has proved himself to be a real solid player and and a starter in this league for for a long time thon maker looks like a guy that could turn into something big two young guys at least that are either already good or have legit potential to be great but but neither of them were received by the suns the suns didn't get malcolm brogdon and they didn't get thon maker these are two guys that you were targeting that you need at least one of these you gotta get one for eric blood so you gotta get at least thon maker come on that would make a little bit of sense he's a center that could work with your team a little bit they didn't and they end up with with next to nothing for Eric Bledsoe. And let's talk about the Bucks just to end this off. Um, I I think the Bucks. I mean, obviously they won this trade. This is a huge trade for them. They needed someone like Eric Bledsoe that can break up the defense, that can penetrate and make plays inside an explosive finisher that will run with this team. I think that's good. I'm not super high on Eric Bledsoe. I don't think he's like a star or anything, um, but you know he can benefit from this, and I think that the Bucks will benefit from him. I don't think he's going to change everything. I don't think that this makes them a a, a contender for the NBA Finals, um, but I do think that this will make them a better team overall. I think that they are better off for sure, especially with what they gave up. You, you can't not win this trade. You can't not get better from here with Eric Blood, so uh, that's how I'm feeling about this. Um, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens when Jabari Parker comes back. Um, what lineups are you running then? Are you bringing Brogdon off the bench at that point? We'll see how it goes right now. I, be- I assume that they're going to start um, Eric Blood, so and Brogdon in the backcourt, have Middleton, Giannis, and um, Don Maker fill out the rest of that starting lineup. But who knows? They could switch it up. That would be interesting to see, but... That was what I think is going to happen. That's going to do it for this video. Conclusion, the Bucks, they're going to they're gonna get better from this. They are benefiting from this trade. Um, and the Suns, uh, I, I can't explain the logic behind this move. Obviously, you had to get rid of Bledsoe, but, but you literally got nothing back, basically. So, um, not really sure what's up with that. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.